What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Hayden. This is where we talk about all things business, finance, or entrepreneurship related. Through a video I was actually a bit reluctant to make, and that's how I was able to make an extra thousand dollars in 2018, just buying and selling watches. Now I wasn't doing this necessarily to make profit, of course, I never buy anything really knowing I'm gonna lose money on, that doesn't make sense to me. You wanna purchase everything you can with intrinsic value if you can. So for me, this actually isn't necessarily a business. I'm not doing this to make huge money. I absolutely love watches, it's just a passion of mine. So in buying and selling them, if I can make a few dollars over the course of doing it and getting to wear some pretty cool watches, why wouldn't I? So this is to walk you through a step-by-step -step on what I bought why I bought it, at how much, and what did I sell it for. So 2018 was actually not like a super eventful year in the watches, I really only bought a few. And starting that is going to be my Ioris F1 Williams Team Edition Chronograph. I absolutely loved this watch. It has real carbon fiber with a titanium casing. The coolest thing about this watch is not only is it limited to 2000, but it comes with a little replica of the BMW Formula One steering wheel, along with a actual piece of the winning F1 car. To me, that was super awesome. It was something I had to have. And another huge push for me to go ahead and buy this watch was the fact that it was limited. Now, limited could be a bit of a gray area when it comes to flipping watches, because there's a bit of a trend with all these watch companies that just say limited for the sake of building hype. When I buy something limited, there needs to be some type of real collection not just with watches, but something else behind the heritage on what they're dedicating that limited edition to. In this case, I saw the BMW, I saw the actual F1 car piece, and I knew that this is something that's not just gonna correlate to just watch guys, but any anybody into F1, BMW, or having just a really unique kind of display case. Now, I got super lucky with this purchase, and I think the reason I did it was actually listed incorrectly on eBay with horrendous pictures. I picked this watch up for 500 bucks. The case was a little beat up and the watch was filthy and probably was never clean. They kept this box in a garage, you could tell. So I got this watch cleaned up, cleaned up the case a little bit, shined the actual bearing of the F1 car piece and wore it for about six months. Um, I didn't send it out to get service because as I wore it, it worked perfect. The chronograph worked perfect. The timing was really good. It was just a gorgeous automatic watch. Just really didn't fit the top of my wrist too well. And I wanted to get something else down the road. I was able to sell this watch for $1,000. So on that particular watch, I got to make 500 bucks and it was a really awesome experience owning that. Second watch on the list isn't a very eventful watch. I got this little square Armani watch. I paid 35 bucks for it on OfferUp and I just sold it really quick for $90 on eBay. This was a watch that I had no intention of really wearing. I like brands that have heritage behind it, that have real craftsmanship. I just saw it for 35 bucks and thought, why not? So I made a quick $55. The next watch on that list was a watch I absolutely fell in love with, and that is the Zin 104. Now, like I just mentioned, I really like to buy watches that have heritage in the brand that go back some time and you get to see real craftsmanship. This is a watch that I paid $1,100 for. You can get them for about 13 to 1400 brand new. And in my opinion, you get a lot of bang for your buck. You have the engravement in the back of the display case. You have these gorgeous syringe-like second hands with beautiful markers. The loom on this, on this watch is great. In fact, when I got this watch, I actually had no intentions of ever flipping it. I thought this was something that I was gonna keep forever and probably keep it in the family, pass it down. But then one day, about seven months later, all of a sudden, the second hand would stop moving. It would wind up, slow down, and completely stop. And of course, you can imagine I was, I was aggravated. So I called Zinn who's all the way out in Germany. The only retailer they have here is an online store called Watch Buys, which I would totally recommend. They're great people to talk to and super knowledgeable. The only problem is, is sending that watch out, even though it's covered under warranty, all of those parts come from Germany and they take their time sending them. Germans have this cliche, of perfect on time, everything's in order. Definitely not with Zinn. That watch took about 12 weeks just to have the parts sent over and repaired and then sent back to me. So it actually put a really bad taste in my mouth. I mean, even with a Rolex or an Omega, at the 
very least, you maybe you would wait four weeks. If not, you could just bring it in somewhere locally. So as soon as I got it back, I listed it up for sale. Now, I did not make a ton of money on this. And like I said, I don't do this for the money. This is a hobby for me. I love watches. So even if I can break even, I'm more than happy with that. I was able to sell this watch for a bit of a profit. I sold it for 1200 bucks, so I made an extra $100 on it and, and got to enjoy it for some time and until it broke. The next watch on here, this thing was so cheap, I had to get it and it was in immaculate condition. A Tag Heuer Formula One. I guess you could see a trend with Formula One stuff. And I believe the model number was WAH. This was a watch the guy wanted $400 for and it was immaculate. He told me he got this from a work benefit of like 10 years ago and never wore it, it just sat in a drawer. After we met, we realized it wasn't quite keeping time right, which is strange because it's quartz. I told him I was probably gonna pass on it and I really didn't even do it as a negotiation tactic. I just didn't wanna go into something I wasn't even that in love with the watch for. But he ended up saying, if you give me 250 right now, it's yours. So I handed over $250 and I got this watch. And I actually kept it for a while. The loom on this watch is really cool as you can see here. It is a full dial loom. So that one I sold on eBay for $550. By the way, the problem with the hand was all it needed was a simple battery change. So that one I made about $300 on, give or take the battery, which I think was like 50 bucks. And the very same dude had some collectible Dukes of Hazards watch that I really know nothing about, but I know there's a huge collection behind that brand and he only wanted 10 bucks for this watch. While I went in the bathroom, I looked it up on eBay and they were selling from 50 to $90, so gave him 10 bucks for it, sold it for 60 bucks. Made myself a quick $50. So all in all, I made $1,015. Again, it's not huge money. I don't get into this for the sake of making big money. Really, if I could break even on a watch that I truly like, that's not a bad game to me, but of course you wanna make some money if you can. These are just the watches that I ended up flipping and selling. That's not counting a few others that I did purchase. But anyway, guys, if you found this video helpful or useful, please hit the like button subscribe and drop a comment. Let me know what type of experiences you guys have had flipping watches. Well, as always guys, thank you so much for watching. I look forward to the next time.